We have come to worship Him today. Amen? Amen. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I believe that's all the announcements. Let's get right into the service uh, this morning. Thank you for being here. Thank you for making your way out to God's house. Those are our visitors who are now becoming family. We appreciate you and we ask God to bless you and keep your, his hand upon you. Amen. And amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter. We're going to be reading from there in just a moment. 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter. The title of the message this morning is, What Are We to Do? On our way through. What are we to do on our way through? The scriptures tell us that as Christians, okay, as Christians, there's a lot of stuff being said about Christians today and uh, in our in our world. But our this first responsibility as Christians is to love God and to love our neighbors. Love God and to love our neighbors, right? How do we do that? Well, the Bible tells us how to do it. We love God, it says, by obeying Him. You say, well, I love God. Okay, well, John 14, 15 says, If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. 1 John 2, 5 says, But those who obey God's word, truly show how completely they love him. That is how we know we are living in him. How do we know that we are Christians? How do we know that we are in God, in Christ, if you will? How do we know that we are who we say we are? The scripture says we know it by how completely we obey God. Right? If we obey God, then it shows how completely we love him. How completely we love him. Now, we love our neighbors by being ambassadors to our neighbors or the world. Because the scripture tells us everyone is our neighbor. Right? Everybody is our neighbor. An ambassador is one who represents the policies and interests of their home countries. They represent the leaders of their home country. That's what an ambassador does. And that's what the scriptures call us. Right? And we're going to look at that in 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, all the way through chapter 6, verse 1, says this. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. Amen. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. No longer are counting people's sins against them. And he gave us the wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be off the offering for our sin, so that we would or could be made right with God through Christ. As God's partners, we beg you not to accept this marvelous gift of God's kindness and then ignore it. And then ignore it. Hebrews 11 chapter, 1 Peter the second chapter tells us that we are but foreigners, pilgrims in this world. We are traveling through to a more glorious and wonderful place, are we not? Amen? Amen? But the question is, what are we to do while we're traveling through this whole world? What are we to do as we're traveling through? Amen? He didn't say just sit on your backsides and do it nothing. In Thessalonians, he tells them to occupy until I come. 
That occupy is a word that means to do something. To busy yourself with something. And we're going to find out what he wants us to busy ourselves with. What are we to do on our way through? Father, in Jesus' name I ask, Lord, as your messenger, help me to bring forth the message as you would have it brought forth. Touch your people, touch, Lord God, each and every one of us as we look to the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us into the truth. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this. Help us, each and individual one, Lord, to be able to receive that word for ourselves and to speak it into our lives, Lord God, in a special and unique way. Father, I thank you in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Amen. Excuse me. The scriptures tell us that we are not citizens of this world. Philippians 3.20 says, but we are citizens of heaven. Do you understand? We, do, we all say we're a citizen of the United States, and we, we are. But there's a greater citizenship for us. Amen. Amen? This is not our only citizenship. We have a greater citizenship, and that is to the kingdom of heaven. Yes. We are all citizens of heaven, where the Lord Jesus Christ lives, the scripture says, and we are eagerly awaiting for him to return as our Savior. Philippians 1.27 says, above all, above all, you must live as citizens of heaven. Not as the citizens of the United States so much, but we have a greater again, so we act, you know, we do, as a citizen, we should do the responsibilities that we have as a citizen, but we have a greater call as well. We are citizens of heaven, and we should live as citizens of heaven above being living as citizens of the United States. Yes, we have certain rights as a United States citizen, but if that right trumps over our right for our heavenly citizenship, then we need to do what God says, not what the world says. Amen? Amen. We need to do what God says. Live as citizens of heaven, first and foremost, conducting yourselves in a manner worthy of the good news about Christ. We should live like we're saying, you know what? The good news that Jesus Christ died on a cross for me is great. And I want to live like that. I want to glorify God with my life. Yeah, I can say certain things. I can do certain things. I can act a certain way because I'm a citizen of the United States. But because I'm a citizen of heaven, I won't act that way. I won't do those things. We should never put anything above our citizenship of heaven. We should never live in such a way that it brings uh, dishonor to God just so that we can fulfill our need as a citizen of the United States. Ambassadors represent the policies and interests of their home countries. No matter where in the world, if they come here, they represent their country. That's why they got uh, the diplomatic immunity. Because when they're here, they are a guest of the United States. Now, they're supposed to act like a good guest. Sometimes they don't. But they're supposed to act like a good guest. And when we are living here, we ought to be acting as a guest, as ambassadors here. We represent the one that sent us. We represent the one that we were born into, the kingdom that we were born into, right? So our countenance, our conduct, our conduct rather, should be that of heaven and not of earth. We represent the leader who sent us. We represent the leader. Do you represent God? Or are you representing yourself or something else when you do what you do in this world, no matter what it is, good or bad? Do you represent God or do you represent something else? Always and foremost, you should represent God. Everything else is below that. Doesn't mean you can't do that. It just means it's below that in that spectrum. Let's look at our scripture text. 2 Corinthians 15, we're going to look at verse 17 through and 18, just the first part. 
This means that anyone who belongs to Christ, anyone who belongs to Christ, okay, if you have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you have acknowledged Him as the Son of God, if you have asked Him for forgiveness and repented of your sins, He said anyone that belongs to Christ, that's who He's talking about, has become a new person. You're not the old person. You shouldn't be acting like the old person. You shouldn't be doing the things like the old person. Now, I know we all grow and we're all in that process. But we should be moving forward towards that goal. The old life is gone. You no longer in that old life. But a new life has begun. And all this is a gift from God. It is a gift from God. Scripture in Ephesians, the second, cha second chapter, verses 8 and 9, says that, that uh, for by grace you are saved, through faith, it is not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. Right? So, by grace, through faith, we are saved. By grace, through faith, we are saved. Not of ourselves, it is a gift of God. Amen. It is a gift of God. Every one of us have received the gift from God, if you belong to Jesus Christ. Through your faith in Jesus Christ. Not of any works you do. Okay? Your works are your obedience to God's word. Not your way to salvation. Amen. Get me there. Your works is your obedience to God. Not your way to salvation. Everyone has a new life now. You have, when you accepted Christ, you were brought, were brought into the family of God. And you receive this gift. Then verse 18, the last part says, who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us the task of reconciling people to him. We were brought us back to himself. He brought us back. Okay? We didn't go find him. He came and found us. Amen. You understand? You didn't do nothing. You didn't. You say, oh, I came to know Jesus Christ. No, he came to know you, and you agreed to accept him. But he was looking after you. He was longing for you. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for you so that that separation could be brought together and we could be reconciled. Yes. God, through Christ, was reconciled back to man. Yes. The problem is that man still had to be reconciled back to God. So he has given us the ministry of reconciliation or reconciling people back to him. He's given each one of us that ministry to do, that task, if you will, here. Verse 19, for God who was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us the wonderful message of reconciliation. That's a beautiful picture. Because God sent his son, paid the price. Satan had the world in, uh, in hostage, so to speak. And God sent his son and paid the ransom for our sins. He paid the ransom for our souls. And he brought us back, the scripture says. We are bought with a price. Yes. We've been bought yes. back. Amen. Every single one, every person. The problem is that there are those who don't know it or who reject what God has already done. It's a done deal. Every single person can be saved. Yeah. Every single person. He reconciled the world back to himself. No longer counting people's sins against them. But they have to make a choice. By grace, God did his part. Through faith, our part. We are saved. We got to do what we need to do. We need to repent. Scripture over and over again. Jesus said it. Uh, John the Baptist says, repent for the forgiveness of sins. Repent and have your forgiveness of sins. We need to repent of our sins and he will forgive us of those sins. But we have a wonderful message. A wonderful message. Amen. It sounds familiar. It was a great message, a wonderful message, an excellent message. But that's what it is. It is a wonderful message, the message of Jesus Christ. 
who died on the cross to bring the world back to the God the Father. Every single one of us now have that message within us through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brings that message into you. He gives you that message. He empowers that message. He empowers you to put forth that message. It's up to you and I to let that message go forth. Verse 20 says, we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We are his ambassadors. He has sent us. He is our leader. He's the one that we listen to. He's the one that we take guidance from. He's the one that sets up the plan. And we are the ones that follow the plan. Any ambassador that doesn't follow the plan or their leader needs to be fired or should be fired or is fired. We follow the plan of our leader, who is God, the, our Father. He said, God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ. We speak for Christ when we ask people, come back to God. God has made that gulf in between him and man so that there is no gulf. He has bridged that gulf. And now he's standing on our side of the bridge. And he's saying, here I am. Come to me. And each one of us should be saying, God is standing right there. We don't even have to cross the bridge. He's already done it for us. He's already bridged the gap. He's waiting for us now to come to him. He's waiting for us to come to him. And we are the ones that will tell others that he's waiting for them as well. He is waiting for them as well. We are doing this. It says, we speak for Christ. Christ, when we plead this. And then verse 21 says, for God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Amen. He who was not sin carried the load of sin. Now, one commentary said that God took every sin of mankind, past, present, and future. He took all the sin of man and put it on Christ. That's what imputation means, to put it into their account. He put it in Christ's account as if Christ himself committed all those sins. Do you understand what that means? The divine son of God came into this world and God allowed all the sin, all the evil, all the corruption, all the filth, everything. He allowed all that to be laid on his precious son as if he committed it all. He took it out of our bank account and placed it into his bank account. When he died on the cross, all debts were paid. All debts were paid. Some are standing around walking this earth that don't realize that their debt has been paid. Their debt has been paid. Amen? They don't have to do nothing. All they have to do is believe by faith that Jesus Christ died and, and paid that debt for them. Who never sinned is the offering for our sin that we might be made right before God. That's where our righteousness comes from. Our righteousness does not come from any good works that we do. It doesn't come from us being so nice of a people. It doesn't come from you know any talent, any skill, or anything you have to offer. It doesn't come from that. Everything that you and I have is nothing but filthy rags when placed before Almighty God. But Christ died on the cross, took all our sins, and then gave us back that robe of righteousness. Gave us his righteousness. Amen. Allowed us to do, adorn that righteousness for ourselves. And all that we have to proclaim is if it wasn't for him, if it wasn't for him, where would I be? If it wasn't for him, I'd be lost and alone, out in the dark. But because of Jesus Christ, I now walk in the light. I have hope, Amen. I have love, Amen. I have joy. All those are mine. 
for the taking yeah. if we would trust in the Lord Jesus. Yeah. Chapter 6, verse 1, Paul goes on to say, as God's partners, as God's partners, not just ambassadors, but as God's partners, he says, we beg you not to accept this marvelous gift of God's kindness and then ignore it. Then ignore it as if it doesn't mean a thing. To live your life like he didn't do anything for you. That's what it's saying. It's saying that you have acknowledged that Jesus died, that all your sins have been placed upon him on the cross, and that he did, carried that sin, that weight upon himself, and then you've accepted that he has forgiven you of that, but you walk around and do what you want and act like you want and, and, and don't worry about what he has done. He's saying you ignore it. Don't, we beg you, don't receive this marvelous gift and just ignore what he has done for you. Please do not ignore what God has done through his son, Jesus Christ. Don't ignore it. We are ambassadors. Ambassadors, what does an ambassador do? An ambassador goes forth. What does he do, does what the leader told him? What does God, what has God told us? He said to love our neighbor. How do we love our neighbor? By taking care of our neighbor. By loving them. By giving them good news. Let them know there's a way out. Let them know there's a, a person who can rescue them. Let them know that there's deliverance. Let them know that there's hope. Let them know that there's joy. Let them know that life isn't as bleak and dark as the world wants to paint it. Let them know that there's something more for them Amen. than what they see. Yeah. We're living in a world full of falsehood, full of lies. It's hard to know what the truth is. You know how you know the truth? By knowing who the truth is. Yeah. Amen? When you know the truth, then you will know the truth. We are to reach the world for Jesus Christ. That is what we're supposed to do. But how do we reach the world for Jesus? One way is combining resources to get the job done, right? I mean, just thinking because of the election year, people wouldn't be able to run for, for office and do anything if it wasn't for people combining all over the place their finances, their efforts to make it happen, right? It gets done because People follow certain individuals and they believe the whom they believe in and get the work done. I tell you what, they put the church to shame. Because we as the church all would be saying, you know what, I want to put my, my finances, my effort, my talents all behind the one I want to follow. The one I want to be in charge. Amen? Amen. So that's one way of doing it. And that's what we as a church do. We as a church do just that. We combine our resources with others to get the job done. As a church, we as a church in the Philippines have built churches, put roofs on buildings. We fed people and fed their leaders. We have helped them to gather together and to worship God together. We have sent people to teach and preach the word of God to them. We have schooled them. We have raised up leaders to guide them. And we have won many to Christ. Do you hear me? Amen. In the Philippines, you, you have built churches, put roofs on, fed people, helped them to gather together, sent people to teach and preach them, schooled them, raised up leaders to guide them, and won many to Christ. You, as a church in Africa, have fed the hungry, helped children to go to school. We have clothed them and gotten them medicine. We have helped them to have housing. We have sent people to teach and preach them, and we have won many to Christ. In El Salvador, we have spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have started orphanages and churches. We have made many children happy with gifts at Christmas time. We have shared food with the poor, and we have won many to Christ. In Hades, 
We send people to teach the children. We've sent gifts and clothing. We have spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we have won many to Christ. In America, we have seen the lives of the addicted change forever. We have clothed, fed, and housed them. We have taught them skills to survive. We have seen mothers brought back to their children and fathers brought back home. We have seen many delivered and healed in the name of Jesus. In our state, we have helped churches to get started, given support to those working for the kingdom of God. We have spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we have won many to Jesus Christ. In our community, we have clothed and fed a multitude. We have cried and rejoiced with many. We have made many families happy at Christmas. We have supplied thousands with school supplies. We have visited the sick and the dying. We have given furniture to those in need. We have spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we have won many to Christ. All of this for the glory of God. And that's not just all of them, because I couldn't remember the others. We have given money to those that went to Russia. We have given money to those that went to Venezuela. We have given money to those that went to Laos. We have given money to those that went to Thailand. We have supported people who went to spread the gospel because we could not. Amen. 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 Come on. If you support missions and you support this church, then you have fulfilled your duty in part as an ambassador of Christ Amen. on a corporate level, okay? Meaning that you join together with the people of God through this joint effort and have accomplished God's work and have accomplished God's work. The church in general and missions specifically gives us the opportunity to do what God would want us to do and we could otherwise not be able to do because we don't have the means nor the skills to do that. But because you have given to that work, because you have paid your tithe, your offerings to this church, you are part of what we do as leaders and this church does as a whole to this community and to this uh, state, to America, to the world. Each one of you are a part of that. The question is, though, what are you doing on an individual way? What are you doing as you go on your way through this world? Huh? What have you done personally to represent the kingdom of heaven here on earth? Have you convinced one person to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? See, God has already reconciled us to himself by his son, Jesus Christ, dying on the cross. Amen. But we must believe by faith that that has already been done and be reconciled to him. That's the choice that each one has to do today. If you haven't done that, you have an opportunity to do that. And you must do that. You can't put it off. You know, we used to sing a song uh, plenty of time years ago. And people thought and think they had plenty of time. You know? I read a story of a young pastor who was talking to a young lady and said, you know, why don't you get saved? What keeps you from getting saved? Well, she said, I got plenty of time. I got plenty of time. I'll, I'll make a decision sometime later. He said, well, what if I wrote out a contract? And said, and in that contract said, you would not get saved for the next year. Would you sign that contract? You won't get saved for the next year. She said, no, of course not. He said, how about six months? What if I wrote a contract saying, you won't get saved for six months. Would you sign that contract? No. A month? No. A week? Well, no, I don't, I'm not going to sign the contract. Well, then you need to get saved today. In our scripture, 2 Corinthians 6, the second chapter, the second verse of that sixth chapter says, right, right now is the time, or the right time rather, is now. Today is the day of salvation. The right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. Don't put it off. Don't give the devil one more day to mess up your life. There have been plenty of people that said, you know what? I got plenty of time. 
and ended up dead before they could ever make a choice for Jesus Christ. Somewhere in their mind, they made a contract saying, when I get over, older, when I get to be 30, or when I get to be 50, or when I get to be whatever, I'll accept Christ as my Lord and Savior. And that time never came. Many souls have been lost. And hell is filled with people who said, I got plenty of time. The scripture says you don't. The scripture says today is the day of salvation. We don't have plenty of time. Are you going to choose this day whom you will serve? Let's stand if you would, please. There have been times when people have spit in my face. They've called me names. They have rejected what I had to say. It will happen. Not everybody's going to be nice to you if you talk to them about Christ. They're not. It will happen. But what makes it worth all that? Those times when somebody will sit and listen to you. When you see somebody on the street and you're willing to stop and talk to them about Jesus Christ and they're willing to pray with you and give their life to Jesus. When you're down in a body row and, and you're handing out tracks and preaching for, for God and, and they are laughing at you and mocking you but yet there's a couple of people who will sit down on the wall and hear what you got to say and give their life to Jesus and other times many times out speaking to other people and people have come to know Jesus Christ there's nothing, no money on earth that can buy that feeling that you have. When somebody comes to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, because you took time to be the ambassador. You took time on your way through this world to stop and speak to them and to share the good news that Jesus Christ died for them as well. You, if you never experienced that, I, I ask you, do it. Experience that. Again, don't, don't put yourself in, in their face. Don't, don't be so aggressive that you just make them stand off from you. But just be the sweet, loving, kind person that God wants you to be and explain to them as they open that door, explain to them the good news that God has for their life. And you may get one. You may not. It may take 10 people before you find somebody that will listen to you. But that one person will be worth it. Worth it all. It will be worth it all. You can't do it by just coming to church. You do it by living your life out there. You do it by speaking to those you know out there that we could never reach. And tell them that Jesus loves them. Because the Bible tells us so. Let's stand if you would, please. Thank you for being in God's house this morning. Thank you for being here with us online. Wherever you may be, we're grateful that you took time to be with us. And may God richly, richly bless you. Is our prayer. We're going to close the prayer at this time.